One out of every five students report being bullied. 13% were made fun of, called names, or insulted. They were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spit on. One in five tweens have been cyberbullied. It's a problem, and it has to stop. Welcome to Bully This, a hero's journey. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Our passion is to show kids that there is life after bullying. You'll hear from former bullies and bullying victims, and you'll hear how they made their journey from troubled youth to successful adults. Welcome to Bully This, a hero's journey. Now your hosts, Tyler Copenhaver Heath and Clifford Starks. Hello and welcome to Bully This. I'm Tyler. I'm Clifford. And we're going to start today as our first episode. So you'll have to forgive us. We're you know new to this, but we're doing everything we can to do a decent job for you. Um, we want to go over, as much as I hate this Silicon Valley term, our whys. You know, there is an importance in whys in business and in life and why you would do a podcast like this. Um, so I'm going to first let Cliff go. Then I'll go into our whys. We're going to talk a little bit about the podcast. And then we're actually, as our first episode... Um, I'm going to interview my co-host here, Cliff. So, um, Cliff, what's your why? Why do you want to do this? Uh, my why is I am a fighter. I've always been a fighter. And I know there's a fighter in everybody. And uh, I just happened to find mine super early. The greatest feeling is when you utilize it appropriately. And so on my journey, I say I'm a fighter who, who fights uh, by your side. And I'll also teach you how to fight along the journey because life's a fight. It's hard, uh, but the fight can also be easy. It just comes down to learning the right strategies, the right techniques, the right process so that you can show up at, in your best light and, in your, and have your best life and uh, provide to others along the way. So that's my why. You're going to ask me what my why is? What is your why? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going to say it. <laughs> um, so to keep it somewhat succinct, and you know, I tend to derail a little bit, but um, I have certain passions that I can't help. And there's this like, I don't even know how to describe it within me. It's deeper than a pain. It's deeper than a soul. It's deeper than a heartache. It's like there's this special component that sometimes gets struck in me. And one of the things that I'm passionate about or what bugs me or, you know, like it makes me feel a little helpless is things of a nature that, I mean, bully is a perfect word, you know, like bullying in business, bullying in life, bullying, you know, a, a dog being abused, a kid being abused. These are all bully things, right? So when I watched a documentary called Bully, I watched that documentary and I looked at it and I saw, I saw and it struck me as such a sadness deep in that part that I can't explain that I had to help somehow. And I couldn't figure out how to help. I've actually been thinking about this for about a year. And I went through this like structure of, well, maybe we can help by just getting kids in the MMA gym and that'll give them confidence. And, you know, like I even put out a, a post that said, hey, I'll go anywhere in this country and because it's a hard thing to do to first walk into your first MMA gym. So I'll walk you into the gym, get you a community there. They'll realize that there's extremely nice people there. You know, they're not bully type personalities, contrary to popular belief. Um, and maybe that's the answer. And then I started thinking, you know, that's not specifically the answer because not everybody's into training. Not everybody's into fitness. And so maybe the answer was more towards um people finding their passions, you know, whether that be music or art or, you know, history or anything, finding that passion, finding um, a way to get into that community and then finding some purpose around that and some confidence around that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it was my why is struck from this feeling of helplessness. How am I going to help? I can't ride the bus with every kid. I see this documentary that just breaks my heart, you know, and it's like, I need to do something about this. So I actually reached out to one of the fathers from the documentary um, and um, we emailed back and forth. He got back to me really quickly, actually. Uh, and he talked to me about, um, or I asked him, if we developed a podcast and we showed people that were bullied and then they came from bully to doing something amazing, whether that be music or arts or history or whatever, you know, that was amazing, would it help kids? 
And he seemed to think so. You know, and one thing that inspired me about the guy is uh, Mr. Smiley. Smiley. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Um, one thing that expire, inspired me is he's not the type of guy that wants to be on TV. You can tell. Mm-hmm. He's a very salt of the earth man. You know, you could tell he's breaking out of this mold of comfort to help his kid, you know, and keep his uh, kid's name alive. And one of my biggest fears is something I'm working on this year too, you know, and, and, and that's sharing more, you know, I had a company that was very, you know, um, uh, what do you say? People thought it was pretty cool. We got offered reality shows doing it. I held back my own business, Mm. you know, by not wanting to be in any sort of spot life. So I'm breaking my own comfort level down because I think that the first step we can start to help is awareness, you know, and if we can make people aware and show them light at the end of the tunnel, then, then maybe that's half the battle. So, yeah, I love it. That's, that's an my amazing why. <laughs> <laughs> and to make impact about something you're frustrated in, right? Amen. So, um, so as our first episode, uh, Cliff is going to actually be our guest today. So, Clifford Starks, and I'm going to talk Cliff up a little bit because he's a humble guy. So, um, I know Cliff really well, so this is pretty easy to do. We've been training partners for about, I don't know. 10, 12 years, something in that manner. We've traveled Time the world. Flies, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> it does. Absolutely. We've traveled the world together. You know, I've been lucky enough to corner Cliff in some fights. Um, uh, one of the crazier experiences was going to Chechnya. Um, that was interesting. I don't even think they were allowing uh, American tourists there at the time. Yeah. They, uh, the pre- remember the president signed our visas just to get us into the country. Mm-hmm. Um And Cliff and I thrive off these kind of experiences too, new experiences, new people. We can find love in all people and cultures. You know, we had, I mean, you, we had people running up to us on the streets. Remember the old man that came up to me and hugged me and said, welcome to the country, (laughs) you know, or the kids, you know, like that were everywhere wanting to take photos with us. So, um, uh, I digress a little bit, but so Cliff and I have had quite a few experiences together. I know Cliff's heart really well and Cliff, like me. Uh, loves fitness, has a passion for people, has a heart for people. Beyond that, he's done some pretty incredible stuff in his life already. You know, uh, so um, I'm just going to skip to uh, ASU. Yeah. So kinesiology major from ASU, you know, um, inspired to help people because, uh, and you'll pardon me for saying this, you were a little bit of a heavy kid, yeah. you know, and so you wanted to help others with that, you know, weight issue, you know, and that confidence issue. Um, and that's actually pushed you into not only getting people fit physically, but fit mentally. Would you say that's absolutely and and working with a lot of people and developing confidence and things like that. So, uh, Cliff was, a an excellent wrestler at ASU while juggling the kinesiology degree. Um, Kane Vasquez is a uh, wrestling partner, which is no easy task. Yep. If you folks aren't <laughs> MMA fans, um, maybe if you, even if you aren't, you probably know that name. He was heavyweight champion of the world. Kane's known to be an absolute animal. Mm-hmm. Couldn't have been the easiest training partner, you know, yep. persevered there. Make you better. Oh yeah. Yeah. In so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to input anything on that? I know we talked about Kane and training yeah, with him a little bit. Um, uh, there's a saying, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And so... Uh, one thing that I always do is focus on, on going into, into whatever it is that I'm going into and, and taking the learning experiences along the way and sharing those learning experiences with other people, Yeah, you know, to remind them that, uh, they're more capable than even they know about, Yeah, you know, just stretching yourself out of the comfort zone. Well, and if that wasn't a challenge, I don't know what is. Yeah. So then there was that big um, what do you want to say? Push where a lot of the wrestlers from ASU, and this is what kind of started the UFC off too. These were the original champions that all came over. A lot of them from ASU, a lot of wrestlers. So you kind of went where they went, which was Arizona combat sports, Trevor Lolly, who's been our coach for a long time. Um, and, uh, Trevor's trained some of the greatest champions in the world. He's still into it, still doing it, you yeah. know? Um, and you went in and told coach Trevor, you know what? I'm going to get to the UFC in a year. Yeah. And Trevor being the coach he is, he said, no way. I'm not going to swear there, but (laughs) he said, no way. Uh, That's impossible. Not going to happen. And the guy is a guy that kind of knows, you know, but yeah, I mean, what's great is you knew when to listen and when not, because guess what? Cliff made it to the UFC in a year. Yep. So, (laughs) and then he took on some huge fights right away, which doesn't usually happen when you get to uh, the UFC. Usually they kind of build you up a little bit. Uh, Cliff, 
first fight Ed Herman or was that second fight? No, that was the second fight. Okay. So the first fight was uh, Dustin Jacoby. Oh yeah, another good fighter. UFC again, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So not the fairest lineup. <laughs> and then uh, uh, um, some other challenging op- opponents even fought Yul Romero. Yeah. Yul was champion for a while too, wasn't he? No, but he has fought for the title three times now. Yeah. 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 I know you took an unlucky knee in that fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He caught me with a good one. And it was, it was funny because when I, when I got caught with it, it was partially my fault too. Yeah. You know, given, giving him a little bit too much, too much, uh, not respect, I want to call it, but uh, I actually didn't give him enough respect Uh actually. And that's what got me in trouble. And we'll probably go into that a little bit more later too, because I think you have an interesting story around that. Um, but uh, the point is, you know, one year you're out there fighting the greatest, some of the greatest fighters in the world, you know, and uh, um, and travel all over the world doing it amazingly. And here's the part that if Cliff and I hadn't been friends for 12 years that I couldn't say in this interview because I wouldn't know. I know Cliff as a banner for a good person. So you walk into a gym and you're an ex UFC fighter at that gym. You are a hero. You are a, what do you want a celebrity to that community for sure. And I feel that you played that part really well in the manner of showing humbleness, showing coaching, showing heart for people, you know, not this badass UFC fighter that's going to beat everybody down. You encouraged people and helped people and coached them up, you know, when they came in showing your heart, you know, yeah. so and it's probably hard to keep your ego in check when all of a sudden you're fighting some of the best people in the world. Um, not for me, just because of the process that I went through. Yeah. You know, we're all going through different processes. Yeah. And uh, I, I just got humbled through life super young. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Cliff is nothing like the man you would think he is from the outside. You know, there's a lot of uh, complexity there. Um, there's, uh, you know, I like to say this. We train our muscles, right? Yep. But the muscle I'm most proud of in life that I train the hardest on is my heart. Yeah. And I feel like you're the same way. Yeah. Agree. And I can tell that from our time together. Um, so, so that's Clifford. I w- I hope I did a good enough job, you know, uh, um, telling you how amazing Cliff is because there's not words. I don't have enough command of the English language to, to tell you succinctly, but, um, that's an overview. Yeah, so I'm honored brother. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first episode in your interview. So that's your intro. And the way we're going to work this is, did I tell you about the hero's journey? A little bit. Okay. So the hero's journey is based on a uh, book that was written by Campbell. And Campbell, basically, he, uh, he studied all these fables throughout the world. And he found these similarities in these fables, you know, it didn't matter whether it was from an African culture, from a European culture, from a uh, Asian culture, there was similarities to these stories. And these stories are deeply psychologically ground in us. And so the book, A Hero of a Thousand Faces, hits on this warrior's journey. The theme that matches and is most psychologically impactful for every member of the world today, because we have this deep ancestral understanding of this type of story Mm -hmm. and this is the same story we're going to tell here yeah awesome in a way yeah so we're going to go on the hero's journey and the hero's journey starts and we'll develop this as we go along through the podcast series but the hero's journey starts with this kick of initiative that puts you on a different path and sometimes that kick of initiative is good Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's bad yeah yeah And in this case, as much as you and I are positive people, we're going to focus on some bad. Mm. And we're going to talk about the subject of bullying. And we're going to talk about the stories that will be relatable to the kids about your experience with bullying. Yeah. So I would like you to disclose some, some of this insight into what it was like to be bullied and some stories so the kids can really understand like, hey, this Clifford guy, yeah. he's a badass. But understand that he was once where you were. I was, uh, I may have been three at the time, uh, but I know for sure I remember what happened when I was four. Uh, I remember glimpses uh, of certain things that happened when I, when I was younger, though. And that was, I remember wanting to get on this Ghostbuster ride, right? 
And I was afraid. I was scared to get on the Ghostbuster ride. And I asked my dad if he would get on the Ghostbuster ride with me. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't. And I, I remember just not getting on that Ghostbuster ride. And what's so crazy, you know, fast forward to where I'm at now, I would have loved to take that, that kid, you know, my younger self yeah. on that Ghostbuster ride because I will never know what was there. Sure. Like I, would, I, never, I never got the opportunity to face it. Yeah. And uh, my own dad didn't get, get on there with me to help me face it. Mm -hmm. And it hurt. Sure. You know, it hurt. Um, so I remember that moment. And I also remember him driving away. And I mean driving away where he didn't come back. Yeah. You know, and I, I knew he wasn't coming back. And I actually remember, and this was when I was four. I remember telling my mom that he wasn't coming back. And my mom would, would say, oh, he'll, he'll come and visit you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. I knew. I yeah. knew. Uh, I was very good at reading energy uh, at a very young age. And I don't want to get too woo-woo with people. But I, going through my journey, I've, I'm realizing my talents and my gifts. Yeah. Uh, one of those talents is the ability to, to read energy. And uh, yeah, I knew he wasn't coming back. And I had a decision to make yeah. on that day. And so I made the decision of the world's a scary effing place. And you got to do your best to survive in it. Yeah. And so that's what I did. So as you're going through adolescence, dad's gone, which I think, you know, we're actually going to have a psychologist on the show um, yeah. next week uh, to kind of analyze this stuff in depth from science. But as you're going along, dad's gone. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people look at that as protector. You know, yeah. we look at mother first and then I think we look at father as a different way, you know, kind of yeah. alpha dog leader of the pack, you know. So now you don't have that protection. What's happening at school? Yeah, so here's what was interesting. And uh, my mom remarried when I was six. Okay. And he was, he was always there for me. Yeah. But I still had that thought like, all right, well, one person who was supposed to be there can yeah. leave. So how do I know that this one's going to stay? Sure. So I had that in the back of my head. But um, I always did my best uh, to do right by people. It was interesting, like you, we talk about the heart, and that's one thing that I've always had. Yeah, you know, I, I just had a heart for people, and I loved my mom, and I knew my my mom loved him, and so I didn't know what to to think of the situation. So I just played it out the best that I could, and he happened to have some really good advice along the way. Uh, but at school, I was uh, the outside kid for yeah. for quite a bit, and and part of that. How did kid. that feel? Uh, it sucked. Yeah. It was really, really hard. Because the thing with kids, they just want to fit in. Yeah. Like the goal is like, all right, how do I fit in? Well, the reason I couldn't fit in, I'm the only black kid at the school. <laughs> like they called it all white Tukey. Yeah. And uh -huh. so that's where I was. And I'm like, I'm screwed. I can't possibly fit in. Look at my skin color. I'm screwed. I don't have a chance. Yeah. And it goes both ways, you know, like an all black school with a white kid would probably be the same experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went to school in Oklahoma. I was um, one of three white kids in the yeah. school. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it's just kind of like, well, here we go. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's go do this thing. And so as a young kid, what you're saying is like, when your first instinct is, I know I'm different, uh, you know, in this way, in comparison to everybody else in the school, you're saying you're only starting on a left foot from the start, in your own mind, at least. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, I just, uh, I took it with what I had. You know, I, I was in what I was in. Uh, the one thing that I always had, uh, my mom told this to me, is just this confidence, mm -hmm. this unshakable confidence. And I think it, it's partially generational. I would, I would love to speak with a psychologist on this. and. Because I think it's interesting stuff. It's a very interesting topic. But I will say this. Even if a person doesn't have confidence in them, it can be built in them. I agree you know, with I that. Prove that. I've proven that over and over again. And so... That's well, why I think we have to find... You call it find your greatness. Yeah. You know, find the greatness within. I yeah, call absolutely. it, you know, 
find that thing you're most passionate about and drive all forces towards it and find that, you know. Yeah. Whatever that anchor is for that person, uh, they just need to find it. And so whether that be your message, my message, a combination of yeah. both of our messages, I don't really care. I just want them to get to the result. Well, and that's what's interesting. So we drive home these theories, right? So I have this uh, um, theory around d- directing everything towards a goal. Mm-hmm. If you're directing everything in life towards a goal, you know, then that's your best chance for succeeding in it. I actually just read Will Smith's book. He thinks that like this too. You know, basically he, he talks about directing everything in life. He, he talks about fight camp at one point. Yeah. So his whole life is fight camp. You know, and uh, his mentor or excuse me, his manager asks him, what's your loftiest goal in life? You know, you need to define it. What's your loftiest goal in life? And he said, I want to be the best actor in the world, the most popular, the most money. And the manager sits back. He's like, now that's a goal. Yeah. And what's amazing about that is once you start to find that said goal, you know that you can direct everything towards it. Will worked out, you know, like disciplined, uh, studied everything he could do to approach that goal, you know, because this is lofty as that is as a goal. We do have a little bit of control of that because each time we're making a decision, we can make a decision to go away from the goal or go towards the goal. Yeah. And so I've done this actually three different ways. I've actually built and murdered a probability chart because I'm a nerd like that yeah. and showed uh, mathematically how we can make decisions that align or uh, push us away from the goal uh-huh. because that works for some people. That works awesome in my head. Yeah. I can just tell you it works for you. I know you well yeah. enough, you know, but some people don't even see it that way. Yeah. Some people have to see, okay, what if the goal is the top of this mountain? Make uh-huh. the goal the top of this mountain, uh-huh. but you have to push this rock up it, right? Yeah. So most people, when they start their goal, you know, they're like excited. I'm going to get this done. They're running with the rock, right? Pushing yeah. the rock. It's making all kinds of momentum. You know, the problem is it gets tiring to push yeah. the rock. And then it's like, I'm only that far yeah. up this hill, you yeah. know? And then you're like, I don't know about this. <laughs> and then you make a decision and it pushes the rock backwards. Yeah. And then you make another decision. And now you're spiraling out of control and the rock crushes you. Yeah. You know, but what if you just fully move that every decision you're making is slowly moving that rock upwards, you know, yeah, and you get to the top of the mountain. That is the goal. Yeah. Three visual, three way, different ways of saying the same thing. Right. Yeah, but absolutely. we never know what works for ourselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. so back to uh, I really want you to I know I know you don't want to do this because you're a guy that lives in the positive, you uh-huh. know, but I really want you to tell a story that will hit home. To a kid like Alex Libby Uh from the documentary uh, Bully, here's a kid, nice kid, you know, really nice kid. He gets on the bus and they're stabbing him with pencils, punching him. You know, his parents don't even know what's going on. Uh His sister was not so nice to him either. This kid is taking every beating he can take in life, you know. What can you say about where you were to make him understand that you were that kid on the bus at one point too? Yeah. So I call that uh, the dark place. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's a place where it's so dark because you're just trying to survive and you don't even know how to do that. Yeah. Because you don't have any anchors. Yeah. Right. And without any anchors, uh, life can become such a slippery slope. And just as you talk about that person who, who lets that rock fall on, on top of them, right, and smashes them and crushes them. Uh, they're in that position, and then they're just asking the question, like, well, what do I do now? Yeah. Like, um, I got this rock on me. Yeah. But what was that rock? You know, is that My kids rock? teaching you, teasing you, or that was, you know, was these, were these things that were placed on you by yourself, or, you know, were, was it from the outside? Was there... I know we've talked about a red kid kid that, redhead kid that bullied you for yeah. a while, you know? Yeah. I just wanted to be safe. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted. Yeah. So my, my number one concern was like, okay, how do I get safe? When my biological dad drove away, I knew it was up to me yeah. in life. Mm-hmm. So I was given a gift because yeah. I saw it as such. And saying like, okay. 
So I, I know what it feels like to be safe and I know what it feels like not to be safe. Yeah. You know, in that moment, I had a decision to make and I was afraid because I didn't know what was next. I had a dad that was gone. Well, dad's gone and that like kids can be mean too, right? Yeah. Especially with difference, yeah. you know? And so now I, I knew like, okay, I'm getting picked on. I don't like the way this feels. Mm-hmm. What can I do? Yeah. And then I start, start critically thinking. Yeah. It was interesting uh, going through my journey. I thought everyone did that. <laughs> I thought like, this is life. This is what you get. Think through it. Yeah. Think through it. And so you talk about your, your heart being your most powerful muscle and it is our most powerful muscle. Um, but our mind is so powerful too. Our mind is so powerful. Yeah. And so I've always used my mind and I, I get it like the inspiration is so built in me that I, I go into that space and I go into that state. That's, that's the world I know. Cause I, I it's not, when you practice it, when life's hard, it's when you, pr- or when it's, le- when it's easy, it's when you practice it, when life is hard. Yeah. And so what I will say is I do know that dark place. Yeah. Um, I do know that lost feeling. I do know all of that stuff. And I know it because I know what it feels like to get picked on. Yeah. I know what it feels like when, when people are using your words against you. Yeah. Or making it sound like you're something that you're not. Yeah. Or telling you that you're something that you're not. And it feels heavy, yeah. very heavy. It feels like a weighted sandbag on your, your back, your ankles, your wrist, everything. Because it's so got it you afraid, afraid to even go to school and things like that. Things that you yeah. have to do in life. You yeah. have to go to school. Yeah, yeah. It feels, it's a very, very heavy feeling. Yeah. I mean, you got to hand it to kids like Alex. Most people will never be that brave and ride. You know, as much as he's taken a beating on the, the bus, he still gets on the damn bus every day. You know, that's a lot of courage. Yeah. More courage than somebody that grows up a bully with confidence will ever have in their entire life. Yeah. You know, and so I really want to get into the, I'm so excited for the therapist to come on next mm-hmm. week because I had a chance to talk to her and she's awesome. You know, and so, and I really uh, want to go into some of this stuff more, but how to find that bad stuff happens in life, right? You know, you and I, as much as we're so close, him and I are actually six hours apart birthdays. And we're really close and uh, in our minds. But one way that we're polar opposites is Cliff is ultimate positive guy. (laughs) And uh, I'm not, it's not, I'm not a negative. And Cliff, you can vouch for this. I'm not a negative person. I'm always positive. It's very rare that you'll accept in pictures, uh, that you won't see me smiling. You know, I love people, you know? And so, um, but I've had a lot of painful things happen in life that I don't understand. And these things happen to everybody. I use that to fuel me. I use that anger, that pain. You'll never see it on the outside. I'm stoking the chimney inside. And I use that to get to where I want to be. You know, my bullies were not, Kids, my bullies were teachers. Mm-hmm. My bullies were, was the principal. You know, I had a father who was incarcerated, you know, that automatically ma- made me some kid that was going to be, you know, following dad. In fact, the stat on that's like 95% of kids whose parents went to jail, their kids are going too. you know? Yeah. So, and here's these people in my life and they're telling me I'm stupid. I'll never amount to anything. You know, you're going to be just like your dad. You're going to be in there together, you know? And so, and at a kid's age, and I talked to this, talked to the therapist a little bit about this too, like, because I didn't know whether to bring this stuff up, you know, because we're, ta- we're, help, we're trying to help kids that are getting bullied by kids. But I realized there's more than that. I, I've been talking to a lot of people uh, when we're talking to guests or would be guests about they've been bullied by their parents, you know, they've been bullied by adults. They're, they're getting bullied right now in their workplace, you know? And so, um, so I think there's a lot of complexity to this, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, um, and so what I get at with this is if you have to use pain, you know, use some pain and we'll talk to the therapist to make sure I'm not giving, you know, 
beyond it works for me, you know? <laughs> so like I use that anger and, you know, I was afraid as hell to go to college. Mm-hmm. I thought I was stupid. I would like, I was, I had to, you know, I was very nearly a high school dropout too. So it wasn't like I was winning the world there. You know, i I saw more value back then in a full-time job and, yeah. you know, and that's what I thought my destiny was. Yeah. And, um, so I get to college, I have to start in all the most basic of classes. Mm-hmm. And what I found was I was actually doing really well. Mm-hmm. I wasn't this stupid person that everybody told me I was. Yeah. And so my biggest flip off to my old teachers and stuff, I'm like, what is the most complex degree I can think of? What's the biggest worded degree? You know, like I'm going to go get that. <laughs> and biochemistry, that was yeah. it. So that was what set me on my path to biochemistry and getting a degree in biochemistry. Mm-hmm. So little did I know I would absolutely love it because that nerdy brain of mine just absorbs uh, science like no other. Like I find science and fitness and everything else. But I digress. What I really wanted to get to with that was talking to the therapist. There's different types of bullying, right? There's this like the adults, kids, you know, things like that. But beyond that, you were a big kid growing up. Yeah. Like a big boy. And you've had the power all along to fight off those bullies. Mm-hmm. It took getting the confidence to be able to do that. But now you got the other side of the coin. You got a kid like Alex Libby. Alex, don't take this the wrong way. You are not a monster like Cliff was. Cliff was a caged monster in his own head. So with Alex, he's not a big guy. You know, I would, and you and I, what's interesting about us, as much as we like training and as much as we like MMA, MMA, we don't solve our problems with fighting. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that we have, but you and I would never solve a problem with it. You know, we meet somebody on the street, you know, and they're doing something wrong, yours and I's first instinct would not be, I'm going to fight this guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's the thing too. It's, you know, it's like, there's that, you got to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And the therapist will weigh on this more, but that doesn't mean fighting. Yeah. That doesn't mean fighting the bully on the bus. I mean, would you, what do you think about that? Yeah. Like I look at the word fighting is, is such a beautiful word to me. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we can, we can fight with this. We can fight with this, these ears. We can fight with our mouth. We can fight with our thoughts. Yeah. Right? And so um, one, one skill that you're talking about, one that I like to use personally is negotiation. Yeah. I'm not here to, like, I just have nothing to prove to anybody. Yeah. I've already proven enough. And then some. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I had a friend of mine being a jackass. Uh, he's bumping into this guy at a bar. And the guy's like, what are you doing? He's like, what, you got a problem? And my friend's being an idiot. Mm-hmm. He's bullying this guy. Yeah. Right. So the guy's like, yeah, I do have a problem. And my friend goes, well, you're going to have to take it up with me and my, my UFC fr- uh, fighter friend over here. So he automatically roped you into this. Yeah. Okay. Points, points towards me. Yeah. Now the guy can't possibly even beat me, mm-hmm. but he's going to fight us both. He's <laughs> yeah. triggered. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. he's enraged. Yeah. So he's like, F it. I'll fight both of you then. Yeah. And I go, all right. My friend is being an absolute idiot right now. And I apologize. Can I buy you a drink? what i said yeah and so the guy goes you're a cool (laughs) shots on me Ah. and so we take a situation yeah and we turned it into something that was completely different yep and and that's that's what life's about and i slapped my friend upside the head like dude yeah don't be that way Mm -hmm. like that's stupid yeah and i don't hang out with people who are like that so what are you doing they're like I know, I'm sorry, I was being an idiot. Like, yeah, you were. Don't do that anymore. And so it's important that we all keep each other in check. See, part of the thing, it's the checks and balance system. Yeah. Society is going to do what's comfortable to society. So the therapist and I were talking, Uh and what was 
striking, interesting in my head and what goes along with what your story is the outside, right? And even in the warrior's journey, not to be a nerd and always bring that back in, but the warrior's journey has an advisor. And by the way, if you're wondering what the warrior's journey is in the clearest depiction to picture it in your head, think of Star Wars. Star Wars is actually built on the warrior's journey. So Obi-Wan comes in, right? And he guides Luke Mm -hmm. on his journey. So think of that. That's an outside force coming in, right? And you were an outside force coming into this conversation and you changed it. You know, you came in without any emotion to the situation, with a logical stance to the situation. There's this famous sniper named Chris Kyle, one of the top snipers in the world. Um, There's a movie about him. Uh, Bradley Cooper plays him. Mm -hmm. And there's a part where his dad's talking and they're sitting at the dinner table. And he says to the kids, he's like, you can be a sheep in this world. You can be a wolf in this world, or you can be a sheep dog. And what he's getting at is the wolves are the bullies. Yeah. But you better be the sheep dog and going after the bullies. And so what I'm saying is there are those kids with confidence in the school. And that's all it takes is oh, yeah. coming in and saying from a third party, why are you bullying this kid? Yeah. And I'm not saying fight the kid as much as deep down, as much as I'm not a brutal person, I can't stand bully either. So you'd like to see the bully getting the comeuppance, but you know, the, the moral of the story is I don't want that to happen either. You know, I don't believe in that either as much as you want to see the bully get it a little bit, but then after the bully gets it, I don't even feel that good about it. You know, then I feel bad for the bully on a certain level, you know? And so, um, but my point is that outside influence, you know, you were that outside influence. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting. And, And this is a game that I like to play with people. Um, the sheepdog, the sheep, mm-hmm. and the wolf. What if all three of those reside in every single one of us? What I totally to believe choose? that. Yeah. What if we get to choose? We do you choose. Know, I'm going to be the sheepdog. I'm going to be the wolf. Yeah. I'm going to be the sheep. We do choose, but just like anything else, where you start is a longer journey for others. Right. The that's, start that's for love. That's what I love. I, I know you're a hundred percent right about that. <laughs> Cause some yeah. of us start, you were the wolf as a kid or excuse me, I you, you were, <laughs> you could have been the sheep dog. You could have been the wolf or you could have been the sheep. Yeah. And I don't take this the wrong way. You were the sheep, mm-hmm. you know, you could have easily been the other two, but it took some life experiences and some, what do you want to say? Yeah, I mean, you got into football and wrestling later. I'm sure that developed some courage and some uh, um, confidence, yeah. you know. And then you pushed through this journey yeah. a little bit more. I know you're not a bully towards the sheepdog, I'm sure. Yeah. Because you're well, still that type of guy that's not going to allow bullying to happen. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's a picture where, where a kitten is looking at a, in a mirror and it sees a lion. Yeah. Right. I love that picture. Yeah. And so the, the game that I've always played, it didn't matter what I was. It mattered what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. I did stutter. Yeah. I did get picked up. Yeah. I didn't see that though. Do you ever met, met that? Have you ever met that person out there that just has the most confidence? And I don't want to sound bad by saying this, but I'm trying to make a point too. Uh-huh. But you look at him and you're like, how does that person have so much confidence, you know? And it's like, but they're so confident. It leads to everything they're doing in life. You know, like they're getting girls They're, you know, they're like, they're building businesses. You know, they, they have this like unforeseen confidence and that's the power of the brain too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But as the, as the journey goes, you know, um, on the next step is kind of after you come from the dark place, Mm -hmm. you come into this spot of building, right? So you get out of the dark place and you come into this spot of building. Mm -hmm. Do you think that some of that stuff was building you towards what you would eventually become? Were you able to use those painful scenarios towards progress? So there's a saying, I don't remember if it was, it might have been Steve Jobs who said this. He says you can't you can't see the the alignment of the stars 
mm-hmm. looking forward. You can only see it looking backwards. Oh yeah. I love that. He says that to yeah. um, uh, Stanford in his famous Stanford speech, yeah. um, connecting the dots. hundred percent believe that. So Me too. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have known what it was going to create, but this is what I come from. Yeah. So what I always came from, even as a four year old, this is where I came from. I'm like, okay, what, what can I do? If I have enough heart in it, I can figure it out along the way. I 100% agree with that. And I, I in fact, think we're connecting our dots right now. Mm-hmm. If you hadn't been through what you'd went through, if I hadn't went through I, what I'd went through, if we wouldn't have been entrepreneurs, if we wouldn't have gotten into training, we wouldn't be sitting at this table right now, mm-hmm. right? I could be in jail. You could be dead. You know, you never know in yeah. life, right? Yeah. But all these connecting the dots, going through these hardships, you know, uh, going to school, building confidence, you know, that's what brings us here today. And hopefully it's going to make some sort of impact. And none of that made sense while it was happening, right? We didn't think as, you know, when my principal was telling me years ago, you know, that like, you're never going to mount to nothing. Did I think it would lead to a heart for kids yeah. being bullied someday? Yeah. So that's why, you know, I'm good with that mm-hmm. now. I've used it to build me, you know, I've used that pain. You know, we talked about this before and it's like, it's almost harder now when people believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, using that motivation towards greater growth leveled me up. No problem. 120 hour weeks, no problem. School and work at the same time, no problem. You know, 26 workouts a week, no problem. None of this stuff, any problem. You know, every day, I don't want to do that extra pull up. You know what I tell myself? I tell them they wouldn't want you to get that extra pull up either. You know, when I'm sitting there at work, you know, and I'm like 10 o'clock at night and just like still working on something. I'm like, yeah, they'd all want you to put that book down too. Yeah. They'd want you to stop that work now. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not going to do that then. You know, I don't know. They're not going to win. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But that's what I'm talking about is using the, the stuff to build you. I think that, you know, there's the gurus of this world saying, just be positive. Everything comes from, to you, you know. And, you know, I don't believe in the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. I think you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't believe that just by thinking positive and just by thinking I'm going to have a, a, a Ferrari. I don't want a Ferrari. But the, I don't think that stuff's going to come to me. Yeah. I think I have to go out there and get it. And not only that, but I think that painful stuff happens in our lives. And I think it's okay not to be positive about that. I'm saying be positive. But you have to put a smile on your face and you have to be optimistic every day of your life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But if there's some stuff that makes you angry, you know, I don't see a problem with using that stuff. And you've been handed this painful thing anyways, whether it's bullying, whether it's, you know, um, things that have happened to you in life. You've been handed this situation, you know, and you can store that somewhere deep and say, attract things to me. Mm-hmm. Or in my mind, you can take that thing, you can brace it, you can wear it like a badge of honor, and you can use it to make change. And not only that, but use it in a way that directs your heart yeah. towards making change for others too. Yeah. And that's where I think you hit the building phase of your journey, you know. Whether you're studying the law of attractions, you're just out there being positive. And I'll never talk down, you know, more than I just have on that. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't beat it up too bad. It's just, I believe in being absolutely positive. I believe in being absolutely po- optimistic and to be succinct about it. I think that bad stuff happens to really good people. And I think that since it happened, since that thing happened to you, use it as a gift. And that's hard to say because there's some people out there right now that like horrifying things have happened to. But then those people usually that these horrible p- things have happened to, if they can get past the part where they're defeated, that initial part of the warrior's journey, you know, and they can get into this stage of progress where Luke is getting better and he's learning how to lose, use the lightsaber, you know, you know, if they can start to use that lightsaber and change that into building them. And not only that, but those people usually have a huge heart too because this stuff happened, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why you and I were talking before. I am so afraid of people like this not making it out of adolescence, you know, because you can so easily ruin your life. And those those people change the world. Go out there and read most books right now. 
It's somebody with like horrible stuff that happened to them in life. They somehow pulled through by their bootstraps. However, they did it. Positive attraction or like I'm saying, use the pain, you know, I'm just going to call it use the pain. Yeah. So however they did it, now they became doctors that are curing cancer. They become, you know, people changing the world. They become, you know, uh, billionaire um, business people. And from those business resources, they're curing polio and, you know, things of that nature. So that's the building phase of the journey, I yeah, think. Yeah. Well, I look at, um, so everything has like a form of context. Yeah. And we figure out, okay, how are we going to put this context together? Uh, I'll give an example with the law of attraction. If you were to take a magnet, right? And you put the magnet on a refrigerator, it would attract. Yeah. Right. So, so that's a form of, of a law of attraction. It's, it's not unnecessarily, okay, just feel good and just be positive and, yeah. and flow through life. It's going to work. Um, it's, it's a law just like gravity, yeah. right? Like if you jump off a building, <laughs> this will happen. Not, no, just, just grow wings and feathers <laughs> and, and fly off into space and show the world <laughs> that you're doing it. Um, I think there's misconceptions in everything. Yeah. To be honest. Like I look at, well, maybe that's, what's great about the difference between us. On oh, yeah, that yeah. is is you're explaining why the law of attraction works for you. Yeah, I am explaining why it doesn't work for me, or yeah. I, I don't think that way. Yeah. you know. So, well, I, and I I really hope that hope doesn't come off like I'm a negative person. You know, no, no, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think you do. Like, um, I see you and your heart. Yeah, you know that's what it comes down to. And and one gift that I always had, and it would piss me off. I see people's hearts. Yeah. I hated it. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a dark place? Yeah. The dark place was, why are people hurting me? Mm -hmm. Don't you know I care about you? Yeah. That was my dark place. Yeah. I'm like, I love everything and I can't help myself but to do it. Yeah. And it pissed me off. Yeah. Because here you have this love. Yeah. And you're getting bitten for this love. Yeah. <laughs> and it's by, I mean, nothing hurts more than being bitten by somebody you love. Yeah. You know? So that's the hardest type of, you know, heartache. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, it, it was the one good thing I had was since I had love for others, I did have love for myself. Yeah. Because to truly have love for others and, and some people will get this in due time and some people have gotten it. Some people may never get it. You can't truly love people until you love yourself, not to the fullest level. Like when everything's working in alignment, um, you can love people at another level, yeah. at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. But you got to start it internally. Well, and that's where you've gotten to now, right? So these days, mm -hmm. you know, so you went through the dark place. You went through the building phase, you know, and now you're where you are now. No. You know, you're not at the end of the journey. There's still a lot more you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we're starting to get past that building phase of the journey. Mm -hmm. And I really want you to talk about, because um, I think it's relevant. I want you to talk about um, Mr. N. I'm not going to say his name on the um podcast, but Mr. N that was your client for years because yeah. you're doing a lot of coaching these days, you yeah. know? And so I want you, uh, I want you to talk about Mr. N and, yeah. um, and how you've brought him into some of his own confidence. Yeah. You know, it's, it starts with, um, infusing something into somebody nonstop, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's pushing it in or whether that's pulling it out of them because yeah. it's in them. It's always been in them. And uh, this goes back to the law of attraction again. This is very interesting. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's another big, big guy. Yeah. That's probably got a lot of power, yeah. you know, but yeah. he's not, doesn't know that, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of like Lenny of Mice and Men. Yeah. Not that he's <laughs> simple like that, but just a big guy that doesn't know his power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's a genius and he's strong. So the, the combination is pretty nice. 
Um, but was was interesting is he I told him if he keeps at the way he's going and I keep at the way that I'm going, we are going to part mm-hmm. because that is the way that the law works. Like if you take two negatives and you put them together, they're going to split apart. Yeah. If you take two positives and you try and put them together, they're going to split apart. Yeah. But a he's negative. You're positive. Yeah. A positive needs a negative and a negative needs a positive. Yeah. But it's, it's still coming from the same energy. Like yeah. if you have an abundance is coming and an, and an unabundant is coming, it's going to separate from one another or so completely. I, Got a question for you. If you were to take an immovable object and it met an unstoppable force, what would happen? Are we talking true physics? Yeah, yeah, true <laughs> physics. An immo- say that one more time. An immovable object uh-huh. and an unstoppable force. My science brain's ticking. <laughs> Cause you've just used a double on top basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what happens. They would go through one another. See the uh, the unmovable object; it can't be stopped. Yeah, and the un- or the unstoppable force can't be stopped, and the unmovable object can't be moved. Mm-hmm. So when they, oops, when they meet, they're just going to pass through each other. It's so funny because I'm thinking of all the forces applied to both of them, and then trying to do the math equation in my head from so many years of yeah. studying yeah. physics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that you can get lost in those details and not oh, think yeah. of what the simplicity of an answer can be. Yeah, lost in the details. Yeah. And so the same thing's true with like, okay, how do we stop bullying? Yeah. Well, we got to look at all the details. Yeah. We got to look at the stats. Yeah. And the numbers. Yeah, I had an idea of what it was. Just got to. If I love you and you love me, yeah. Well, where where's it at? Yeah. All of a sudden, it goes away. Well, I think, you know, obviously it's awareness and knowing somebody cares. And if I've learned anything, you know, talking to people about the bullying subject, I'm trying to immerse into it as much as possible. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm understanding it. I'm learning that the biggest thing is we need to talk about it. You know, we talk about. So one of the things that's my, I don't know, my favorite mental deal in life is we talk about the um, biological food chain Mm -hmm. and everybody's familiar with that from grade school. Even I paid attention, you know, (laughs) on that that day, but we have the fly and the fly is eaten by the frog Mm -hmm. and the frog is eaten by the wolf and the wolf is eaten by, you know, whatever. So we have this cycle food chain cycle, right? But then we pull one facet of the food chain out and the whole thing's destroyed. I call it a collateral nature. And we've made collateral such a bad word. But I love the word collateral. The collateral impact of things. So what's the collateral impact of awareness? What's the collateral impact of love? Put those in the chain, right? Because when we're talking about bullying, we know it leads to really awful events. You know, some of the worst events that's ever happened in this world. You know, the Nazis were bullies. You know, like these are this is a horrible chain of events. So how do you stop this collateral impact of things? Yeah. It's interesting because sometimes to stop it, it actually has to happen. Yeah. You know, how do you become aware of something if it's never happened? True. And so I look at, um, I'm thankful for everything that's ever happened in my life. You know, my, my biological leaving, um, my real dad staying. Yeah. Um, my mom supporting me in the way that she could. Yeah me understanding things through my perspective lens in the way that I could Yeah. me going through my process and essentially looking at the stars backwards yeah. saying, Oh, well, here's the chain of events. Yep. And this is what happened. And, and this is the result. And wow. What a beautiful thing. I mean, I think that's wonderful. And we'll get a lot more chance to talk about this through the, the series, but, um, uh, so I want to mention next week we'll have, um, Jessica on, she's a therapist, Um, I'm really excited for her to come aboard. I haven't even told you about this, Mm -hmm. but she started out, um, and she was trying to, um, work in prisons with mass shooters and understand the psychology around what happened and what she realized. I hope she's okay with me saying this is that was a, a, that was a little too far down the road 
what are you going to do to help at that point? That person's incarcerated, you know, they've done their mass shooting, you know? So she had to, I, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it's already too late to do something. Yeah. Like if you're already in the arm bar, yeah. you're already in the rear naked choke or you're already in the thing. It's like, too little, too late. That's, that's, just, that's a great point. I mean, and she, so she wanted to go back to the, the start, the start of the problem, which is kids. So now she's been working with kids and bullying and she's going to come in next week and she's going to talk to us about the best way to work with the guests to get the most impact and value to people listening to this program. So it's really exciting. You know, like I'm, I'm excited to have uh, her on. So that's next week. Um, we're still filling up the guest roster, by the way. And so uh, we're going to preload some episodes and then start releasing them. So if you're somebody that wants to be on the show um, and talk about your journey, your hero's journey, um, then uh, we'd love to have you on. You know, we have some really interesting people in the lineup. And like I said, it's not just about fighters. You know, um, Cliff and I are in that immersed in that community. So we tend to know a lot of those guys. Um, so we'll have some on. But even like fitness people, um, I've been talking to a couple of those musicians, yeah. love to have an artist on, you know, I want I want to talk about how to find confidence in communities and things, you know, yeah. how to first awareness, and then community, because the you're a lot less likely when you don't feel alone. And it's hard for parents, even good parents, you know, it's hard for even good parents to fill that space, you know, especially as a kid, a kid wants a friend, wants a couple friends, wants to feel, you know, this. And I get that. That's where that special spot in my heart, you know, gets me is like, I get that helplessness, yeah. you know, but that makes me so sad when you get to the helplessness point where you don't want to be on the planet anymore. Yeah. Big time. And I'll tell you, um, so going through, through my journey, I didn't realize because I I'm, I have this polarizing, I have a look, right? And I have a title mm -hmm. and people see the look and the title. The thing that makes my coaching on another level, I'm relatable. Yeah. And so when, pe when people like. Well, and how, that's what you're doing these days. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, do, how do you relate to this? Yeah. We're all going to step into our arena. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. And whether that's being the best musician that yep. you can be, the best basketball player, the best artist, the best teacher, the yep. best coach, the best whatever it's, it is you're looking to be. Ultimately, it's about getting your edge. That's what I help people do is get their edge. That's perfect. I think that's a good spot to end it. Thanks for watching episode one. Uh, like I said, next week will be uh, episode two with the therapist. Um, and then we'll continue the lineup from there. Um, I hope this helped. I hope it does help somebody, you know, we're going to, uh, compile resources along the way. Uh, we're going to add those to the website. So you have people to reach out to. Um, I get the problem and I get that this problem, if not stop, can call us collateral impact down the road. So let's make the collateral positive instead of negative. Amen. All right. Thanks. You've been listening to bully this a hero's journey. The effects on kids that are bullied are many. Increased risk for depression, anxiety, sleep difficulties, lower grades, and dropping out of school. It's a real problem, and that's why we created this show. We're acutely aware of the pain, shame, and damage that bullying causes, and our passion is to help kids and families to know that there is always help, that there is always a solution. We hope you've gotten some useful information from the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on Facebook at Bully This, A Hero's Journey. Take care, and we'll see you next time.